Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Don O'Dell's Legends. My name is Art Tipaldi. I'm the editor of Blues Music Magazine, and I ask you to check us out at bluesmusicmagazine.com to see about our subscriptions and also our Blues Music Store, where you can buy the best new CDs out there uh, the moment that they're available. And tonight here at Don O'Dell's Legends, we have someone who's been here before as part of a group. Now she's going solo. She's got a great new album out there called, there it is, Cry No More. Uh, and it's Danielle Nicole. Welcome back. Yes, thank you very yeah. much. And I would just say to all the viewers, if you want to know the backstory on Trampled Underfoot, because we're not going to play a whole lot of uh, uh, past history, just go to YouTube uh, when you look up Don O'Dell's Legends and, and put in Trampled Underfoot, Art to Paul the Interviews, and you'll hear the backstory. So yeah. that eliminates that whole yeah, section. Yeah, it takes care of 20 minutes yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. So we got a new CD, Cry No More. Mm -hmm. How is this one? Um, d you've been solo now for what, about four years? Would this that be right? Is, this is my You're fourth year. You're yeah, starting what I the thought. fourth year. Um, um, no, starting the third year. Sorry. Okay. I <laughs> okay. Third, fourth, whatever. It all okay. meshes together. Yeah. And that was over a decade touring with Trampled Underfoot, but you yeah. guys were certainly a band before that in Kansas City. We were, mm -hmm. yeah, but um, I've been solo. This is my second my second solo album, right. and it's um, it's very, it's a lot different from yeah, Wolfden. How, how I, so? What would, I would Wolf say Den? mainly mainly the thing is, is with, with Wolfden, it was a lot of songs that I'd written when I was still with Trampled Underfoot, so okay. it, it has that kind of, it, I think that Wolfden really has that more traditional blues groove vibe. Okay. And this song, this album, I, you know, I was basically just starting fresh with mm -hmm. the sounds and the songs and my writing and, and incorporating other, other songs that I hadn't written. And, you know, I right. still writing with Tony, of yeah, course, yeah, like yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Tough, but um, it's just sonically, it's just a lot different. Okay. I, I reached out a lot more and mm -hmm. it, it was very fun. And yeah. I, you know, I can't wait to expand even upon this one. Cool. Uh, so, so I would assume these were songs written before you went in the studio. Yeah, oh yeah. Rather than, you know, going in there and running through. Um, are they reflective of where you are in life versus the, the previous CD? Wolf oh, definitely. Dead. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've been through some changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't go yeah. through changes over, what, two years yeah. since Wolf did Wolf it come Den, out, yeah. you know? Yeah. So um, it, I think it is reflective, and the, the album is really about just moving on right. and and letting go and choosing choosing a positive path cool. and not not dwelling, not letting your past define who you are like now, that. you know, just moving on right. and making the choice to yeah. be better. Is it important for that message to reach women listeners? Absolutely. Yeah, I hear a whole lot of male music coming through and, and you know, it's the, but this is a very uh, female empowering kind of statement, yeah? It is definitely mm -hmm. for sure. There's a lot of, there's a lot of women power in the song and yeah. just, just, you know, really just knowing who you are and right. not settling for what you, what people tell you they think you should be, nice. you know, and mm -hmm. just, just not being afraid because, you know, you, as a woman, you know, if you, if you speak your mind or if you speak up in a, in a way that's contradictory to how they want it, then, you know, you're yeah. considered... Yes. You know, a different, you know, a not a very nice description of a person. Right. So there's there's a difference between just rolling over yeah. and knowing what you want and, and not being afraid to say this is what I need as, right. a, as a human being, right. not even just as a woman. Right, right. Well, that first song is a crawl. On yeah. Here. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> like the woman is taking control in that song. Well, yeah. And it's like, you know, I'm, you, I'm it's basically I'm willing, you know, I'm willing to let this go. But you right. completely destroyed me and you, you have some work to do before you can get me back. Exactly. You know? That's which nice. Is, which is not unreasonable. No, no, <laughs> no. It's so much different than, you know, the male posturing on those old Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf song. Well, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that, I'm going to let you is, go. This it's is like, a Coco like, Taylor. I'm yeah. a woman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And and this is the third time you've used Tony Bronigal as a producer, twice with Tough mm -hmm. and now once with yourself. Yeah. Uh, what does Tony bring out in you? What, you know, why I return he, to him. He just really he pushes me and it's it's hard cuz they say, you know, don't mix business and personal, but mm -hmm. when when he was producing with Trampled Underfoot, you know, again, was going through some, we were both going through some really hard times, you know, that's how like Goodbye came out right, and stuff. And I right. feel like knowing the personal conflicts I've, I was going through and mm -hmm. he was going through, I really think it didn't, it didn't hurt in right. a lot of ways that it could have. Uh -huh. It really helped the situation. And I think he knows me personally, so he knows when I'm BSing right. in my writing. And right. he knows when I'm not saying what I mean and how I feel. And I think that that really translates musically. Sure. As a, as a producer, how does he challenge you? What is, what is a pro how does this Tony challenge Danielle to get 
Well, he, he, he makes me mean it, and it's not like, <laughs> not, I mean, you know, yeah. I, I don't have a problem feeling it, but right. sometimes, you know, I'm not translating it right. You right. know, maybe I'm tired, or maybe I'm distracted, mm -hmm. or I'm not thinking mm -hmm. about this. Like, when I'm in the show, I'm in that moment right. all the time right. on the stage. Right. And when you're in the studio, there's a lot of distractions, and people yeah. are calling and knocking on the door and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, wait five minutes. Okay, right. do the take again. But he really puts me in that moment and holds me accountable. Cool. He's like, I don't believe this okay you know yeah, and yeah, i'll just be yeah. like you're right yeah <laughs> but, you know, but if i don't feel you know but i don't but i'm not afraid to speak my mind to him because he understands that i'm always coming from a place of respect and if i right. don't i don't agree with him it doesn't mean that he's wrong that's right and you know or that i'm wrong it's just that we we figure out a way that we're both happy mm -hmm. rather than one of us just gritting and having a regret because yeah. that's the last thing you want. Yeah. Because that's that, forever, That's man. right. That's it's right. Yeah, yeah, you never have him again as a producer. <laughs> right. That's, that's cool because one of the things I thought about to ask you is, as a performer, how do you, or can you just explain how you switch from those emotional songs like uh, May I Be Excused or Goodbye mm -hmm. to something that's a little more upbeat like, uh, what I was thinking of here, um, Save Me or Cry No More. Or how do you translate from that deep em place and emotion? How do you commit that? And then, and then the next song is something a little more upbeat. Well, what, you know, usually it a takes show. a minute. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it takes a little bit to recover. And sometimes, you know, we'll have just a moment to breathe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because it is, it is therapeutic for me. And it's, you know, it's very cathartic, a lot of these songs, you know, because yeah. I write from personal experiences. Right, right. So I, I think that that helps the fact that, you know, if I'm going from something like My Heart Remains, where mm -hmm. it's a, just a gut bucket, just pouring out emotional to save me, yeah. it's I also wrote Save Me. So I feel that deeply about that song as right, well. Right. And so I think that having that energy throughout it mm -hmm. and through the transition just makes it really more it's easier to take rather than just chunk yeah. and just cutting it off yeah. like a light switch. Yeah. You know? When did you learn that, that skill's not the right word, but just the committing to a song so deeply like you do? do you, can you pinpoint the, the moment that it sort of happened? And well, yeah, I mean, that was the first thing my dad told me, okay. you know, and when, uh -huh. when, when he was taught, when we were singing, because I was actually a Coco Taylor song, and she had that uh -huh. real, um, that yeah. growl, you know, and he's like, if you want to sing Coco, you have to growl, and he's right. like, I know you can do it, but I was just scared to do it. He's yeah. like, own it. Don't sing it if you don't mean it. Right. Know what you're singing, you know, and of course, yeah. I was singing about a man done me wrong yeah, I'm right. like 12 years old yeah. but like in my head it had happened you know oh, yeah. and it was like he just you just believe it and if you're not you know it's he taught me that you know especially with the blues because it's mm -hmm. such a it's emotion it's raw emotion right. music and because of that you people know when you when you're not when you don't mean what you're saying and yeah. even if it's a really positive song about even if it's like yeah you know, um, Wang Dang Doodle, right. which is just, party you know, song. it's a party song and you, you know, but you, you still, but you want to have a really great time with it. And right. so you mean it just yeah. as much as, as anything. Yeah. Oh, I got two things here, but I'll, <laughs> I'll do the second. Um, so you just mentioned your dad, who was a very well-respected musician in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. What's your mom, who's a wonderful singer, what's she given to you in, in your years as a musician? What's her, what's been her she, part of Danielle? She really, my mom taught me to harmonize okay. and really not, not blend, but she really taught me to find the note and feel the note. Uh -huh. And, and another thing, another thing with meaning it as okay. well, you know, she, she, um, loved Etta James, yeah. loved Bonnie Raitt, of course, right. you know, and she really, she taught me a lot about bending, not like sit down and give me lessons, mm -hmm. but you know, we, we grew up on their side stage, you know. Right. We, we, they took us to the jam, so they were hauling us around. And I'm <laughs> carrying Dad's guitar, and I'm like, God, you know, of yeah. course, because yeah. I'm, I'm a kid at the time. But, yeah. but watching there and sitting there and just watching all the shows and watching the way that my mom would bend the notes and right. kind of dance around them oh, as nice. well, it really, and I, I didn't realize that so much. Like, it just was natural to me because her mom's a singer, my yeah. mom's a singer, yeah. my dad sang, you know, yeah. it was just, um, but as I've stepped out on my own and I'm singing all the songs mm -hmm. and I'm bending genres and I'm yeah. opening up, I'm really seeing what, 
was embedded in me that I didn't even that's realize. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's fun. I'm discovering it all yeah, the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's very cool. Um, and you mentioned about um, uh, before that about committing to the song, et cetera. Some of the most thrilling uh, 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 shows I've ever seen with you are when you're doing a duet with someone, <laughs> when, when Victor Wainwright comes on stage right. or something like that. How do you... I've seen guitar players battle on stage and they, you know, they go back and forth. What's it like when two singers get up there to cover I'd Rather Go Blind or something like that? How, how, does, that, how does that reach the heights of uh, the, 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 those high heights? Well, I, you know, I think the, there's, um, there's an energy of not having done it before. Uh -huh. So there's that, there's that excitement that yeah. we really play off right. of. And is, is there that thing of I want to show him how how good I can sing this song and he better top it? Not for me. Okay. It's not an ego thing okay. for me. Uh -huh. And it's never been like, you know, I've always felt, you know, not not to challenge somebody, but push them and yeah. not push them, but more lift them. And yeah. so I work harder, but I don't. I don't sing any more notes okay. than I would have, right. you know, like mm -hmm. if anything, I try to do a little bit less so that if we do harmonize together, then yes. it's, it's amazing, Beautiful. you know, sure. um, Dawn from the last cruise, yeah. she's from Canada. I had never, never sang with her before. And we got her up on the last tough thing mm -hmm. and we did, um, summertime and right. it was in a key I'd never done or uh -huh. played in before. And so, you know, it was completely, completely foreign and it was, I'm getting chills. Wow. It was one of the most. Yeah amazing experiences ever that and it was so singing cool. with another female there right. was no competition there yeah. wasn't I wanted to sing better I didn't right. better for for as a whole yeah, you know you, not yeah, you want to her. enhance the, the yeah, performance exactly not. I wanted to work harder rather That's than so cool. sing more yeah, you know yeah, and yeah. and it really we were looking at each other and we were right. communicating yeah, and, yeah. and that's you know that's what I love about it and the opportunity to to sing Curtis Salgado and I's duet together yeah, live and, yeah. and, and, to, and to sing with Victor it's, right. it's it's such a rare moment and I've just been fortunate enough to not have the egos yeah. up there with us, you know. Yeah. So I think I, it, it's all about who you're with. And Tommy, like you know, oh, yeah, we've right, been yeah. doing uh, that's been that's been so much fun, and we've been actually sure. able to do it quite a few times together. Yeah, so yeah. it's great. Is, <laughs> yeah, and I saw your your trampled underfoot reunion for the uh, returnees yeah. on the last cruise, and it was just wonderful. First, you guys played, but then you called up all your friends, and they joined you. And that yeah, was, over the of yeah. everybody over the years, yeah. and it was great. Yeah. So. so you're out of trampled underfoot. Now. You've mm -hmm. been on your own. What are the challenges of establishing Danielle Nicole after being in this fairly successful band, Trampled Underfoot? Well, you know, a lot of it is, you know, I didn't take the Schneblin name. You know, right. I did Danielle Nicole. So a lot of mm -hmm. people, you know, it's got a Danielle from Trampled Underfoot. They're like, oh, uh, oh, okay. Oh, but, one, yeah. you know, so there, it is essentially a little bit of starting over, especially mm -hmm. in the smaller markets up here that Tuff really didn't get a foothold That's in. That's true. You know? yeah. so, um, but thankfully with, with social media and everything, you know, mm -hmm. you Google Danielle Nicole, Danielle Nicole band, right. and then you can find, you just have to do a little bit of research, but yeah. you know, I, I certainly did not start from scratch, but I think right. uh, some of the challenges now is that there are, there are just a lot of really, really great touring bands that are out there. And so yeah. essentially just having to start over a little bit, yeah. but yeah, I'm in it for the long. Yeah, so. that's true. And it's growing, you, you know, yeah. there, it's been growing every single year and you know, we're, we're, we've got Europe stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. And we're in France, and you know oh, it's great. like you know. So Go we're ahead. we're going to be able to to really get in front of a lot of yeah. You know, a lot of people. I, I guess when you started, you sort of had to commit yourself to it's going like a startup company. It's going yeah. to take a few years. Oh, yeah. to, to get this. It's not going to start off at the same level that Tuff might have been at. No, and I didn't expect that that's at all. You know, yeah. and my and that's what I told my guitarist Brandon. He's he's the only original one from uh -huh. 2015 yeah, yeah. when we started. You know. <laughs> right. And um, we've been through two drummers, and now we're just a trio. And you know, he knows that it's been slow going, but he really he believes in the project, mm -hmm. you know. And he and obviously now I've got Chris on. Yeah. Chris has always been a champion of right. mine, and I his. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, this sound and this 
I was like, I wish we could re-record the whole album with this band. Right. Nothing against Tony and yeah, Johnny yeah, yeah, or yeah. anybody, right, but I'm right. like, I want to capture this sound. Yeah, so I'm yeah. glad we get to be here well, to do this. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the other thing I was going to say is you have seven different guitar players on the album. <laughs> yes. You've got Mike Finnegan, of all people, on keyboards. Yes. And his son, Kelly. And his son, Kelly, <laughs> doing a great, what a duet. Mm -hmm. Is that hard to replicate on the road? Are you, are you able to replicate it on the road accurately? You know, Brandon does an amazing job wow. of covering. Wait to see every him. feel of every song, I yeah. you know, it's it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and Chris has been, yeah. you know, he's been not under Tony's wing, but you know, he's known Tony for so sure. long, and and really with the sounds that, you know, Tony's got, he's got a sound, mm -hmm. and Chris is really embodied on the record as well. So yeah. it was better to have seven different guitarists than seven different drummers. That's, that's right. For, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But, but no, I'm, it's it's really, really exciting. And, you know, I'm used to, you know, because Mike played on uh, Badlands, you know, both of the Tough Records as well. Mike, Mike Finnegan, Finnegan did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for, for me to play these songs live without keys, you know, we've been able to, always been able to, I think, change it in a way mm -hmm. that you don't really miss them so much. Right, you know, right. I mean, sometimes it's like, will, man, that Finnegan run, you oh can, geez, it's yeah. missing. But will, <laughs> will you put keys on at some point? Is that, because I know you've had no, keys. No, yeah, I think. I think, um, I never thought I'd say this, but I yeah. probably, you know, we've been, every time we have a second guitarist, mm -hmm. it is really cool. Well, you know, <laughs> you mentioned Shamika earlier. Yeah. I don't know if that was on camera or on our previous <laughs> talk, but she got rid of keyboards, what, six, seven years ago and added that second guitar yeah. player and has never gone back. It's really cool. Interesting. It's, it's really great. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a bass player. Mm -hmm. Are there challenges as a, or what are the challenges as a bass player to be the singer because people have said to me it's they've watched bands where the bass player is a singer and they say that takes a lot to be able to do that yeah what, there it's a lot like <laughs> what? explain it to the non-musical well usually the 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 vocals and the bass are not together okay like at, really at any time really? <laughs> yeah oh, so no. they you know unless you're but you know unless you're actually singing with the bass line which is very rare very like rare. the bass is going more with the kick yes and so when you're completely contradicting yourself you know it's um it's a challenge, but yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. I like it yeah. a lot. Do you have to separate things in your brain at that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it's it's really fun when I when I'll go play with North Mississippi for a yeah, while and like yeah. do mostly just playing bass right. and then I come back to these songs and I'm like, oh yeah, I got yeah. I got to keep it all going yeah. all the time, yeah. you know. Yeah. It, but it's fun. I love it. It's it's frustrating and it's challenging and it's you know, yeah. it's it's hard. Like, um, what is it on the album Hot Spell? Mm -hmm. That I mean, that was very difficult. Like, because you know, that was one that that was the Bill Withers song that he had written, right. and then we recorded it. And so I did the bass um, separately because it gets to the bridge, and it, it took a while to. Okay. And I still get tripped up sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. hey, you just you know, you do it twice, and it's jazz. That's so it's right. Fine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> meant to twice. do it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I always say as a writer, when I used to teach speech, the audience doesn't know what you leave out of your speech if you're going along. Right. And so in the same way, mm -hmm. if you miss a couple of runs, let's say, the audience doesn't know that. Well, but they do, because oh, I they go, do. <laughs> or I'm like, you see their faces. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm expressive and it works to my favor as yeah. well as my disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, motherhood, we were talking about you have two children. Mm -hmm. You've got great, you've got amazing challenges. What are the challenges yeah. of being a mom and then being on the road like this? Well, the, the, I mean, career? obviously the main thing is being away mm -hmm. from them, mm -hmm. you know, but um, it's, this is, this is in our, our family bloodline, right. yeah. you know, yeah. and when I'm home, I don't, I don't take gigs and I don't work, okay. you know, so I, I balance it by being 100% mama Mom. when mm -hmm. I'm home. Yeah. And that's, it's more of a challenge, I think, for me personally than, you know, obviously the boys being away from me, but they've, this is, mama's going on tour, mama's working, you right. know, yeah. Yeah. and, you know, they don't understand how hard it is away being away. The, of course, you know, there are grown people that think this is a vacation, a yeah. paid vacation yeah. for me, you know, yeah. or any, you know, touring musician. Sure. So it, it's really difficult. Um, you know, coming and going, but I've made it a huge, 
huge priority now, especially with this band, that I tour for a couple weeks and then I'm home for at least 10 days. Okay. And then I tour for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. I've never gone more than three weeks, you no. know, and then that's the sacrifice that I'm... That you make. Yeah, yeah. that, you know, because I could be on the road three, four months at a time, go over yeah. to Europe for six months and make it work, you know. Right. But I choose to, I want to be there for my yeah, children, yeah. and I, you know, I like making lunches, and, you know, I don't always like getting up at 6.45 in the morning, and but in a van. nobody oh, does, oh, oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but, you know, getting out of the van and going immediately to pick up, you know, yeah. from school and stuff, yeah. but it's, it, it is more than worth it to me, because yeah. I get to play music for a living, and I get to, my, and my children are healthy, and they love, you know, yeah. I love them, they know that I love That's them, right. yeah. and they know that I would cancel any gig and fly right home right. if I needed right. to. Right. They know that. Yeah. Well, I know we were supposed to do a talk in Norway last year. And, yep. And and when Chris and uh, Nick came, they said, "Oh, there's some family problems." Oh, and I just figured it's kid stuff, and I get yep. it. You it know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because like, uh, we got grandkids, and I know, <laughs> you know, we get the yeah, phone call. Yeah. My, my babe needed me, you know, yeah. and we needed we needed yeah. to Skype, and yeah. we needed that's, you know yeah. we needed to see his yeah. mama, and yeah. so yeah, that well, was that's, what needed. That's tough, but it sounds like you're handling that well. How yeah. about the challenges? of being a female running a band you don't see a whole lot of no that, um you know I've got I've actually got a really strong female team my manager's mm -hmm. woman and my my booking agent is a female okay. and so it is really it's really great to have yeah. I have a really strong woman team and so right. you know they and by now I'm, I'm pretty established with a lot of the places I've been playing as well yeah. so it's you know, I it, it's hit and miss. I mean, people are still people, and guys are still guys. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And there are people that still have the mentality, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And you know, you can talk about the war stories, and mm -hmm. I could tell all the woes. But honestly, it's just you know, I know how to to say what I need and not be a jerk about it. Right. You know, so if right. I'm like, if this is how I need it, this is how I need it. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to be a jerk, then we can talk mm -hmm. like that. You yeah. know, if yeah. you. But but right. generally, I'm just I don't come in with that mentality that I'm going to be treated poorly right. because you come in with that negative expectation yeah, yeah. then it's yeah. going to happen you're yeah. asking for it so sure. but like I said people are people you just you take it with stride right. and I mean when it comes down to it you want to be mean to me I'll pull the gig yeah yeah yeah, I <laughs> there know. There are too many great people to work with That's out right. there. That's you right. know, yeah. there's just yeah. there's not room for that. That's and you right. know, if my my manager's like, I know we've been trying to get into this club, but the guy's just been a jerk three We're or four not, times. We'll I'm like, you know else. what? We'll go someplace yeah. else because yeah. I don't. You know, it's hard enough out here to be treated poorly out here on top of it. Right. Were you running a lot of the business part with Tough when you guys were there? As a I was doing the well, tour managing. Okay. Like Nick did the, the inventory, like he did all the merchandise, mm -hmm. Chris did the accounting, and I did the tour managing. Okay. So yeah, See, I was I was dealing with a lot of people, you right. know, and it's hard as the artist doing the tour yeah. management and because you, it's like a conflict of interest because yep. I'm fighting for myself, That's you know, right. so yeah. Yeah. it was, you know, and, and being a woman trying to call mm -hmm. and advance these mm -hmm. shows and saying, they're like, well, we don't do food or hospitality. I'm like, well, the contract that you signed says that you do at least yeah. one of the two. So you're going to need to do, you right. know, like, yeah. and it, it sucks that you have to fight for I that. Know. But I know. It's, you know, well, I have a no, toughen you up for what you're doing does. right now. And I mean, know? it's just a conversation. Yeah. Like, what are they going like, to, like, <laughs> they're words, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> they're words. Yeah. I have two kids. Yeah. I'm like, I know. they're just this words. Is nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'll mom you. Yeah, I, I clean will mom, poop. This is you nothing. Will, you will feel my gaze through the phone. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can feel it through the email. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've seen you so many times with tough. Uh, Norway, uh, festivals around the world. Um, it's just been a thrill to see you guys. What, if you look back on Tough, what's been the one or two really m important lessons you've taken from that experience that are now uppermost in, in your solo career? Um, the lessons, I would have probably said get we like get a solid team that you trust right off the bat mm -hmm. rather than trying to work within a, somebody that's older than you and has been in the game longer because if it's not working yeah then they're doing something wrong right if it doesn't feel right then cha you Change know it. so I, th yeah. I feel like I feel like we waste we we didn't waste time but we spent a lot of time with the wrong team okay and so if it doesn't feel right just yeah. trust your gut yeah. I would say yeah. would be yeah. the biggest lesson mm -hmm. is dream big and trust your gut cool cool uh, do you um, do you feel a responsibility, uh, uh, an added responsibility, as having been an international blues challenge winner and also a winner of the Blues Music Awards as a bassist? Do, th do those awards put extra pressure on a performer? I feel like they do, mm -hmm. especially, you know, being, being the IBC recipient 
in 2008, like, you know, we, we felt like we were underdogs and nobody mm -hmm. knew who we were. And we kind of yeah. felt like we just kind of just, we just wanted to be like, we're from Kansas City, here yeah, we yeah, are, and yeah, we did. Yeah, and, yeah. and um, you know, but be, being the, the first female nominated and the first female to win that's a right. Blues Music Award for the bass category, yeah. it was huge. I mean, yeah. it, and that's, that is, it is very important to me. And I actually, somebody asked me, when I was going solo, they're like, so are you still going to play bass? You're going <laughs> to hire a bass player? And that's yeah. basically what I did. I was yeah. like, yeah. 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 What do you think? <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. play bass. Yeah. This is yeah. like, this is who yeah. I am now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I'm well, I think, uh, you know, certainly with this album, which is out in 2018, yeah. you may see a few more Blues Music Award nominations for this. So, Danielle, thank you so much. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have the Danielle Nicole Band out there playing songs from Cry No More. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I'm gonna